Welcome to Main Event Pong Presents Books and Booze with Banshee and Deezy. So. And today we are reviewing a book that most of you shuck faces have probably read, and that is The Maze Runner. If you haven't read The Maze Runner, you've probably seen the movie. Either way, you've probably heard of it. You are probably familiar with The Maze Runner. So what we decided to drink tonight were uh, ru your basic rum runners, because uh, Maze Runner, rum runner, oh, see what we did there? A basic rum runner, the recipe I used, there's definitely a lot of different variations of uh, recipes, but this one has a shot of Malibu rum, a shot of blackberry brandy, a splash of orange juice, a splash of cranberry, and a splash of pineapple juice. And since we like to start things off with a shot here at Books and Booze, we decided we was gonna try this blackberry brandy. Stop. To James Stop. Dashner, who I met the other day. It smells like cough syrup. Oh, motherfucker, it tastes like cough syrup. That tastes uh, exactly like a shot of fucking cough syrup. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, fuck. I think there's rap songs about this. I may need to watch that down with this. Ooh. No. Oh, that's not bad. I chase it with this. No, I'm just kidding. That's not <laughs> super bad. No, it's good. I mean, it's okay. It's good. All right, yeah, it's strong. Woo, we gonna be drunk? I know, right? <laughs> So a little synopsis. You got this shank who wakes up. <laughs> she is using a lot of the cuss words from the yes. book. Yes. Now I love let me let me t let me start off with this. I was going to give you a little synopsis first, but I actually really like this. So I love it when a book or a TV show or whatever it is that your entertainment that you got going on makes up their own language. So um here at the um, at the MEP household are huge Battlestar Galactica fans, like really big. And so to me, I, I was telling Dee's earlier that I feel like when you um, when you're out in public and you hear you hear somebody say frack, right away you wanna be like, so say we all. Like right away it's an instant camaraderie, you wanna be that person's friend, you wanna be like their best friend and um, you already know you have something in common with them. So I actually love it when books make up their own language. He, he's, he's half and half on it. I, I feel like it depends on the book and I understand mm -hmm. you know this is a young adult so they can't cuss. I don't yeah. cuss really either. It's just that if you're going to use a certain word a lot and you're kind of trying to say the F word, mm -hmm. just write it. I feel like I feel like it would be like, oh, like for me, it's like, oh, they, you know, they're saying this. Yeah. But because when you make some love, sometimes it can sound corny. But a good example that she brought up was Battlestar Galactica, which is a, which is a great series. Mm -hmm. And when you they watch say, it. watch that stuff. So say we watch, all, you yeah. frackers. When you hear frack, you know what they're talking about, and it's mm -hmm. awesome. So, mm -hmm. but so I'm fifty fifty. It just depends. And this one, even though I recommend this book and I love this book. The made up cuss words sometimes they bug me, but I got over. I love it, man. Like if you're if you're new to the glade, which is where the whole thing takes place, you're a greenie. You know, shuck I think is supposed to be fuck. We think shuck is supposed to be fuck. I thought it was shank is supposed to be, or you think shank is supposed? To, I don't know. I don't know. Cause shank is like a pronoun, like yeah, and I shank feel like, like fuck somebody. is an adjective. So sounds that's like what, shank's the n word. Yeah. <laughs> kind what? Of. That's kind of what shit Or shithead. Like. I kind of felt oh, like it yeah, meant kinda, like yeah. shithead or yeah. something. Anyway, so I love that shank. But anyways, that shuck, whatever. Now I'm confused. Now I'm confusing my own self. Anyways, so you got Thomas. He wakes up in an elevator ascending. And he's like, what? There's like, he's surrounded by supplies. And he has no idea what is going on really who he is. I think he remembers his name at the beginning. That's yes? all, he, all he knows is his name. Is yeah, all he knows is his name. He doesn't know who he is, where he comes from, like what he does for a living, whether or not he's had a BJ in the last four hours. Like he, but I don't he's, know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't okay. know. He but doesn't he, know what he means. But he is, he does know because he actually makes a reference, if I can mm -hmm. remember, that he actually realizes that he knows his name, but it's not like he doesn't know like how to talk or something. Yeah. He actually mentions that like mentions how his um, amnesia is very specific. Yeah, it, a lot of times amnesia is like that in reality though, where you can't remember specifics about like your life, but I mean you still remember how to read, you still mm. remember what year it is, 
you remember like who George Washington is but like you wouldn't remember that George Washington was your cousin if he was your cousin you know so it's kind of like amnesia is very strange um, and same thing in this book even though it's you know spoiler alert but scientifically like induced amnesia yeah exactly anyways let's take a drink real quick so he wakes up, ascends from the elevator. There's a bunch of dudes, um, kind of rough around the edges, look a little sweaty, look a little dirty, um, on this glade, uh, what they call the glade, which is basically like, like a, farm. a field with like moderate weather, like not too sunny, not too cold, um, and a couple of structures like, you know, scattered around. And that's it. No girls, all guys. Uh, wakes up with no recollection of where he is. So stuff starts to happen. He kind of finds out that they're surrounded by this gigantic maze, hence the maze runner. There are things inside the mazes that are um, trying to kill you and eat you and, and stuff like that called grievers. The, they've assigned different roles to the different uh, gladers uh, to kind of create their own society, which that's part of the book I really like. I feel like, you know, I mean, eventually in the book you realize it's all an experiment by the government to try to, like, find some roundabout way to come up with... Like, an anom like to, to, yeah. to trigger, like, an anomaly to, to save mankind. Yeah. Which For some reason they need, like, a cure, but they need, like, specific people to be, like, resilient to certain factors, to be, to get a cure or whatever, so they put people in these tests because they have to be able to withstand this stuff in order to be the person who's going to, like, create the cure or whatever. I mean, it's all, like, it's you know, super sci-fi. Sci it's sci-fi, exactly. Crazy super sci-fi, yeah. So they create this society, which I really like. I think that it pretty much works. I mean, every once in a while you get a bad egg or you get someone who goes a little dictatorish, <clears throat> cough, galley, whatever. But for the most part, what I kind of like about the Gladers is, I mean, they pretty much just built, built like a society of yeah. their own society yeah. um, almost, based almost on friendship. Near, almost near utopian to where everybody had a job and everybody... Yeah, kind of communist. <laughs> yeah, kind of com or socialism or whatever you want to call everybody it. Everybody yeah. had a job. Everybody had a place. Everybody worked together. Everybody had an equal share of work. Mm -hmm. And they actually, if they wasn't on, if they weren't on a time limit, they could have did it forever. Yeah. But the whole thing with the story is everything is perfect until the time limit comes to a close. Yeah. And that's when all hell breaks. So kind of right after Thomas gets there, a couple days after Thomas gets there. The, they hear the elevator go off again. That means that somebody new is coming up with supplies and Teresa shows up. And when Teresa shows up, she's holding a, a note that says she's the last one ever. And then things start changing. Grievers start coming out the maze. Mm -hmm. Like, um... Before there were rules. Mm -hmm, there they were never rules. entered the glade and now all of a sudden, guess mm -hmm. what? There's Grievers in the glade. Yep. So things start changing. Um, and you know, of course, because when Teresa shows up, first thing she does is say Thomas's name. So everybody like, uh, you Thomas, Thomas is clearly associated with Teresa and then bad things go down when Teresa shows up. So right away they're like, Thomas, you associated with the bad stuff with this chick, y'all's bad news. So people start to get, some people are like, eh, no, they're still cool, it's coincidence, whatever, we don't know what's happening, obviously somebody built this maze and put us here, so it's still damn the man. Whereas some other people are like, nope, y'all's involved, like Galley, he's like, y'all's involved. Use the devil. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, there, there was one thing that I, they didn't incorporate in the movie, mm -hmm. that it was in the book, and it's probably the one thing I kind of did have a problem with it. In the book, they can actually communicate telepathically. Oh yes, Teresa and Thomas. Which I thought was, I, I thought that was kind of dumb. I loved it. I didn't like. You it. know what I liked it? I thought there were some really fucking funny jokes that they. Oh man, there was this one thing that cracked me up that happened telepathically, like at the end of the book. Let me, let me. It was. Just, it's not like a big spoiler or anything. It's just so funny. Uh, I was about to say something about the end of the book, but I don't want to say nothing right now. <laughs> this is. This happens telepathically between Teresa and and Thomas at the end of the book. They're like separated in different bunkers, right? And they're talking to each other. <laughs> telepathically and Thomas is like 
I think Mean Ho's farted three times in the last minute. I don't know. See, that kind of stuff is funny and that makes it worth it to me. Mm. I like literally was drinking when I read that and I spewed. Like, I, it was so funny. I just don't, for me, I mean, yeah, there's jokes. But mm -hmm. as far as their struggle, I think it made it too easy for them that that they were telepathic. And then when that movie came out, they totally did away with the tele. Mm -hmm. The, tele the, the telepathic whatever abilities and I was totally fine with it because I don't know I thought it was like an extra thing that they didn't really need like this whole world is already crazy mm -hmm. so I just I don't know I don't crazy. know I like their telepathic ability and I would have liked to have seen that um they right. talked about it's okay they talked a lot about um when I went to see the si um to the signing they're gonna make the the Death Cure movie a little bit more loyal to the book than they did with the Scorch Trial. That's what James Dashner says anyways. But they're, they haven't resumed filming. You guys know Dylan O'Brien got hurt. Yes. And then it turns out Teresa's pregnant now. So he's better now and back on Teen Wolf, but Teresa's pregnant so they can't resume filming or they something will. like that. They did too. They'll do it though. Or I don't know if it's Teresa or Brenda. One of them's pregnant. Um, but He's pregnant. <laughs> Gally is pregnant. Congratulations, <laughs> Gally. Wait, Gally's cheers, not even in it. Cheers for Gally. I don't know. For being pregnant. Congratulations. <laughs> it's a girl. Oh, that nah. What was I saying? Oh, so they, they said they were going to make it a little more loyal. Who knows? Um, I actually didn't... I mean, I think the Scorch... He, he said he thought it was loyal. I think the Scorch Trial is a completely different movie from actually, the book. Actually, I haven't seen the Scorch Trial. I oh, thought see, the Maze oh, you're talking Runner... About, yeah, the Maze Runner yeah, I thought the Maze was... Maze Runner was pretty loyal. I mean, there's a lot of differences, but it's pretty loyal. But no, the Scorch Trial is literally a different movie Re See, than no, the I book. haven't seen that one yet. But I didn't mind it. Honestly, I thought it was a really good movie. It was really action-packed. Um, the cranks look like zombies. I loved it. Um, it's one of the few movies to book. I mean, and Banshee has a rant going on where she's like, stop complaining about the books to movies because I just want them to be made so I can buy shit at Hot Topic. Like, hey, enough! What? Dweez needs another beverage. Already? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Already? Banshee talks a lot, so he drinks a lot. <laughs> Let's talk about some characters. So who's your favorite character in The Maze Runner? You know, a lot of times, like, I'm a big, and then, kind of what she was talking about a second ago, I'm all about support characters, really. Mm -hmm. Big time. Big time support characters that actually have depth. Yep. But in this particular story, even though the supporting characters are great, I do like, you know, um, Newt. Newt is awesome. I do like Chuck. <laughs> Chuck is dope. Uh, fucking, when, sorry, not to, no, but when I went to go see James Dashner, he kept talking about the fangirl, like, obsession with Newt, and he said that, like, 90% of his fans will say that Newt is their favorite character, and 10% say Mino is, it, is their favorite well, character. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, he was like, what about Thomas? Thomas is the character I wrote after myself. <laughs> but yeah, it was yeah. so funny. Uh, mean Ho's dope, but mm -hmm. even Albie, even though Albie's, you know, kind of has his own issues. He's black in the movie. He is black High in the movie. Which, in my brain, I didn't make Albie black in the movie, Who, actually. Who'd you make black? Well, because I always make someone black. Yeah, you do. Who'd you make black? Uh, I think... I think I made Newt black in my brain. Because mm. I gave him a British like accent. A, I think I gave Newt black. I'd like to see a black Newt should have been Newt. black. I mean, I love Newt, though. I love that that kid from, like, um... Well, he's too small. Like, when I saw it... That, he was... Too, yeah, Newt's supposed to be buff, yeah, right? That's he, exactly, he's yeah. written buff, but he's all, like, this little... Yeah, this little scrawny Super kid. tiny, like, little Peter Pan guy from Game of Thrones or when I Yeah, when I pictured Newt, Newt was, like, mm -hmm. you know, Albie was, like, the dude in charge. Yeah. But Newt was, like, the big black dude. But anyway... Mm -hmm. My favorite character is actually not a supporting character. It is Thomas. I think I they, Thomas, Thomas a was a very likable, relatable character. Like mm -hmm. if I was a teenage boy in that situation, I think I would have handled things a lot like Thomas. So I actually like Thomas. Mm -hmm. Thomas goes through so much stuff in the Scorch Trials. Oh my we're gosh. Talk, we're not going to talk <gasps> about it now. It's just that I like Some Thomas. Shit goes down. I like Thomas a lot in um this in the Maze Runner. Mm -hmm. But there's some choices he makes in the Scorch Trials and in the Death Cure that I like a lot, but we'll get into that later. So mm -hmm. I actually like Thomas as a whole, so as a main character. So Thomas is my favorite character. My favorite character is probably um the Grievers. And it's what? not that I don't like any of the characters. You know I like I just feel like they're what? such a unique I to me Science fiction. He's being contrarian now. 
No, I'm not. Shut up. Let me. Can I explain? I allowed you to. I allowed you to express your opinion. They were scary. You don't think the they way, were scary? The way they described them, yeah. I think that for I'm typically not afraid of like robots and. Granted, yes, they're part biological, kind of like a Cylon. Like uh, yeah, those Cylon so. Raiders are, they don't, they're not piloted. They're basically are part orga organic mm -hmm. and part creatures. They mm -hmm. are, they're their own pilots. Um, so it's kind of like that. Like the Grievers are part, they don't have like eyes or faces or whatever. They're part organic, part mechanical. But when they described them, I mean, I have never been afraid of like a cyborg before. I can't think of one. I can't think of. Think. Tell me one cyborg you've been afraid of. Terminator. Yeah, it's not scary. It's more action. Were you really scared of the Terminator? When I was a kid, yeah. I see. I wasn't. The red I, eyes and everything. No, yeah, I, I haven't. I don't think. Hey, Nuts, have you ever been scared of a cyborg? He says no. Not even the Terminator. Very unenthusiastically, he said no. Banshee's afraid of zombies, ghosts, like really big monsters. Occasionally freak me out, like Godzilla and shit. I don't know what it is, but I have nightmares. Like of a giant. I Lizard. I have nightmares all the time where Clover I'm like feet. alone and, and or like even dinosaurs. So I don't know, big shit scares me. That stuff doesn't scare you. No. You don't occasionally have a nightmare where like you're in your room and something big tears your roof off. No. I that happens to me Crazy all lady. the time. I don't know, it's scary to me. But yeah, like uh <laughs> like kind of like a psychological slow killer, like killers sometimes scare me. But mostly ghosts and zombies and spiders. Those are the things that freak the banshee out. But cyborgs have never or you know, kind of robotic thing. I don't even know if cyborg's the right word, but like part part technology, part, yeah, part or organic. Yeah. That stuff has never scared me before. The, the Grievers kind of scared me. The Matrix is not scary. It's all sci-fi. No, but I mean, yeah. you can consider like the idea behind the Matrix and you're a part of this machine and there's robots controlling it. That could be scary. That's more, yeah, that's true. Conceptually, it's scary now that you mention it. So they, I liked the Grievers a lot. Um, from an actual character standpoint, you know, yeah, you kind of have to pick a character. I'm going to pick a character. I'm the 10%. I like Minho a lot. Minho's cool. I fucking... He should have been black. What the fuck? You can't... That's like... Don't take away the other minorities. Take white people away. <laughs> well, I'm just saying if there say... was a choice... If there was a choice between... Yeah. They Minho say... and I knew Minho could have been black. Come on. Mm. Anyway. Minho probably... I just like... His whole thing he's got going on, he's mapped the mazes out. Um, I feel like he, I mean, he's kind of a punk bitch when he like leaves Thomas. Mm. <laughs> you know I what I mean? That, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But I feel like later he's really cool. But um, I don't know, I like him a lot. Uh, I also kind of like Chuck, which tier, spoiler alert, tier with Chuck. But I think he's such a cute little representation of innocence and kind of, Chuck is kind of your first indication that Wicked is not good. <laughs> you know what I mean? That like everything is like Wicked is good. But like he, I mean this is some innocent kid robbed from his parents. I mean granted his parents got the, probably got the whatever it is, the plague or whatever it is and, and went all fucking shank Crank. crazy. They became all cranky. Um, <laughs> Yeah. See what I did? There? I got that. <laughs> and I like Thomas. Thomas is like a problem solver. Yeah, that's you know what thing, I yeah. mean. And, like, and I like Thomas too. I do genuinely. Yeah. There's not a lot of main characters I like. Yeah. I like Thomas. He's one of the few main characters I like in any book. He's just like, okay, wait, hold up. This, blah, blah, blah. And he's brave as fuck. He's like, you know, I'm going to run under this thing. Forget you guys. I'm going to go into this maze. And then he's like, I'm going to save this dude. He's like, I killed this griever. None of y'all ever killed no grievers. And y'all been here way longer than me. Mm. How many grievers you killed? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> he's the freaking kingpin. No, he's dope. No, yeah. I, like, I like Thomas too. He's one I of the few like heroes I like like that. Yep. Uh, hold up. Catch up. Talk while I drink. Um, what am I talking about? <laughs> I can talk about. Uh, this is why I read. I lead because I talk a lot, and Dee's is more of a stoic creature. Well, it's because I drink too. So that's true. Um, what can we talk about? We can talk about. We can talk about. That shit is snoppy. Snoppy. Well, we covered me home. Which I like. We can, we can talk about Teresa. So we can talk about Teresa. Let's talk so about Teresa. So Teresa is um, an interesting female mm -hmm. character. She um 
she steps on the scene. She um, obviously she has her memory lost too, mm -hmm. but um, she's the only girl on the glade. I kind of feel like maybe if the book was a little bit longer, I would like to see some kind of other guys after Teresa, but she's clearly connected to Thomas. So there's no, there's she's obviously a, a love. Bit bad shit crazy. Yeah, there's a love connection with her and Thomas. I would like to see some dude get in the way to kind of mess that up. But clearly, she's for Thomas. Well, but hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You would like to see that? Yeah. Because most guys are like, I hate love triangles. No, guys, no, they're stupid. You like love triangles? It, it just depends. It's, con it's contextual. Is that a high five? No. It's contextual. It so just what? really depends. Teresa clearly has a little bit of knowledge. She, I mean, later in, in some of the other books, she, I don't want to spoil, but you have mixed feelings about her. But in the first book, you're pretty much pulling for Thomas and Teresa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she's... You get the feeling knows a little bit more about what's going on. She has more memories than the other Gladers have. And she, you feel like, has an agenda. Do you feel like she has an agenda? Um, a vagenda. Huh. All girls have a vagenda. Yeah, we do. We have a vagenda. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, it feels like even though I don't think they really touch on it. No, they do expose them in the end. She does mm -hmm. have. She has so, yeah. vague. I don't get the feeling in the first book that she has completely all of her memories back. But in the second book, this bitch knows everything. There's a lot. Yeah. The second, I don't want to ruin the second one because the second one, mm -hmm. there's some stuff that goes down. And they introduce actually another female character in the second one. Whom I also like. Who, to see, I, I don't want to spoil the third one for okay. you because I know some stuff. Mm, but, don't um, ruin it! <laughs> but I'm going to read it. I like, yeah, they do. This one's a good one. Teresa's actually very interesting. She's kind of got a little secret. You don't know whether you want to trust her or not. So she is, she's an interesting female lead in this book. No! She's the only female lead in this book. I need a beverage! I thought he was sleeping. Did he die? No, he's he Okay. Was it kind of looks like a smoothie. It kind of looks healthy, almost like it's some sort of grapefruit juice. But nah, this shit is like 92% booze, yeah, splash, splash, splash. It's, it's delicious. Are you drunk? A little bit. I'm feeling a little tipsy. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I'll be right there. Mm. You're not even hiding it now, so it's a little further to get home. Uh, so, okay, so what's mm. next? What are you talking about? Um, oh, so Galley. I get it though. Yes, he's a villain. But once again, he's, is he really the villain? Who's the villain? Is like nature the villain in this book? Because the fucking flare is, is man itself the villain? Because we fucked up the world? Is fucking wicked the villain? Like whatever, you know what I'm saying? This is where it gets kind of Lord of the Fly-ish. Yeah, exactly. You know, villain you know, is man. like, like yeah. humankind. It's villain. not like the Darkling where you're like, that dude's the villain. Yeah. That dude's fucked up, you know? The villain is... Yeah. Very much situational. Exactly. So he's reacting, you know, he's had this nice peaceful life, working it out in the Glade. The Glade is good. That's all he knows. That's all he knows. And honestly, they had a pretty good life. It's pretty good. But better, in the same respect, he likes to blame Thomas and Teresa for what happened. But in the same respect, that's just the timeline. I mean, Wicked never intended for them to live in the Glade forever. This was an experiment. But he didn't know that. He didn't know that, though. And you never know. Like like I said, shit started going down when these two people rolled up. He never met a girl before that he remembers. And then this, she remembers this guy. I mean, you would think there was a villain, too. I don't blame him for doing what he think was thinks was right. I mean, look at all the crap that went down with Albie. And what's that dude's name? What's the dude's name that like tried to kill Thomas at the beginning of the book? Ben. 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 Not from members. From the movie. Not from the book. But yeah. So I get it. I get it with Gally. I just get his villainry. Well, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's circumstantial it villainry. Like he's. I don't think he's a bad person, and yes, I've read the other books, yeah. so he he pops back up. Oh, does he? He does. He ain't dead? I'm... Mm, spoiler okay. alert! Gally pops back up, but he's very... I'm telling you, you feel bad for him. There's a lot of, you know, obviously, you know yes. that Wicked was controlling okay. him. Okay, let's not call him a villain. Let's call him an antagonist. 
I'm not even going to call him. He's a tool. Well, I mean... And not tool as in Clearly an antagonist is just yeah. against the protagonist. So he's an antagonist. Yeah, okay. Mm. He's, he's... He's a tool. I don't like tool. See, Well, I don't mean tool in the actual... Like, man, this dude's a tool. Like, yeah. nah, man. Wicked uses mm -hmm. him. So it's... It's very... It's very... <laughs> I mean tool in the various... In the very You don't mean it way. in, like, the now socially accepted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, like nah, he's a puppet. <laughs> yeah. There's so much little things that we didn't touch on, but it's good because we want you guys Spoil, to read yeah, it. There's read like it. so much little intricate things. There's mm -hmm. the relationship between the characters. There's, mm -hmm. I don't know, there's like little, the way they like there's live. jobs. Like mm -hmm. Maze Running is an actual job. I love that shit. So, let's talk about our favorite quote. He mostly remembered the workings of the world, but emptied of specifics, faces, names, like a book completely intact, but missing one word in every dozen, making it a miserable and confusing read. As a reader, I was like, yes, that's a good quote. I don't know. It's a good quote. You know what I'm saying? It's a good quote. Like, imagine if you read a book, but every 12th word was removed. Yeah. And you're trying to figure hey, out where, where it is. I've read some books where there's been some books from, uh, words removed. But I read some books people can't write. And they should have removed the 12th word. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Dickens got paid by the word. Did he really? Yeah. Long story short, that's my quote. I just think, as a book nerd, I love stuff. I love stuff in books that's like about reading and about books and... You know that people, I can kind of really sympathize with that. But yeah, you gotta finish that. Shut but, yeah, the like on, up. on two, and you're okay. Like, like nursing, and you want to suppose like a like a little baby nipple on it? Yeah, yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Sexism. <laughs> it is yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. let's rate the book. Deezy, one to five. One to five. I suggested this book. I was so glad I stumbled across this book. I actually stumbled across it before the movie like i just happened to yeah i think i was reading it was way before the movie even like i feel like we were talking yeah about the movie. i forgot what i was reading that actually brought this one up like oh you might like this i give this book a five out of five and i'm wow. i'm only and i might be doing it because i've actually read the whole series and i'm pleased how it came to end sometimes if you read the first book it can um like what's what i'm looking for it can kind of like manipulate your judgment but because he's saying that because he knows I'm not gonna give it a five. <laughs> yeah, he's, she's probably not. But if she read the whole thing, she'd be like Cinco and Maze Runner. I give a five out of five, hands down. I give it a four out of five, and four out of five Stingy. is still a really good. Stingy. Four is so good. I know book readers. Okay, I I have a friend who literally rated her favorite book of all time a four. It doesn't. Make she's like sense. rough. Four out of five is good to me. To me, like whatever. Anything above a three is good. I give it a 4 out of 5. Um, I read this book for two reasons. A, DZ recommended it. And then two, my friend Sarah was like, Dylan O'Brien is my bae and we gotta go see the movie together. And she had read the books and stuff. We actually read them together. It, there's nothing really per se that I expected out of the book that I didn't get, but for some reason, it was a struggle to get through it at some points. I don't know what it, it was. was. It was too dudish. I so I I was finishing it before the movies were coming out. We wanted to go see the movie. I went with Diana and Sarah, two of my BFFFFFFFFs, and I knew I wanted to finish the book before I finished the movie because I just have to. I can't be like going to a movie without seeing without reading the book first. It's like really hard for me. So, and I feel like to get it done was almost a chore. There are books literally where I'm like, oh my God, I gotta go to work and I'm this book is so good right now. And so I'm like putting it on audio on the way to work. You know what I'm saying, you do that too, I do right? that on the way to school, yeah. Yeah, so I'm like putting it because I like, and then when I have to clock in, I'm like, oh my God, let me put it aside. And then on my 15, I'm turning it on, then turning it back on on my lunch, turning it back on on my 15, and then when I leave for work, turning it on on audio in my car too. This wasn't one of those books. Like I was like, oh, I gotta get through it before the movie. So there was something about it that at parts for some reason made it hard to read for me. I know what it was. What? Too many dudes. Not I love romance. dudes though. No. Not enough romance. So it's not even that. It's not that it's not romantic enough. 
there was something about the way that the story progressed that I felt like maybe could have been moved along a little bit. But even then, I, I friggin' hate having to friggin' tell you why I gave it a four. A four is a good score. <laughs> it's all right. A four is above average. Three is average. Three is, I like the book. It's a good book. I would read it again. Thank you for joining. Oh, hold up. Let me finish this because this motherfucker is going to talk shit Nursing. if I don't. Motherfucker, I'm drunk. Like a baby I've bottle. like drooled four times and like fucking. It's not a glass, it's a baby bottle. I'm just saying. <laughs> I want to pretend like I was hardcore for doing that, but there was only like a little bit left, so I can't even pretend that shit. Anyway. So thank you for joining us for Books and Booze with Banshee and Dees. We are going to be reading Fallen um, with a special guest. And I'm really excited about that. I, it's a book. It's a movie. It's coming out. Um, it's for some of you, I mean, it's one of those books people compare to Twilight. Is it? Yeah, I've heard. Even though it's two completely different paranormal entities. Well, they compare it. It's either Twilight or Hunger Games. Those are it. That's what I'm saying. Or Harry Potter. Or Harry Although Potter. nothing is ever Harry Potter, let's be real. Nothing ever compares Harry Potter. Thank you for joining us for Books and Booths with Banshee and Dees. I hope you guys read The Maze Runner. Definitely read it. We both recommend it. Don't just watch a movie. Read it and then watch the Book movie. is always better. That's another then watch the hashtag first book is always better. Hey, James Dashner, you are a funny motherfucker. You cracked me up when I saw you at the signing. If you guys ever have a signing with James Dashner on about in your area, go. That is entertainment. Thank you. Bye. See you later.